Colorado, a land of awe-inspiring landscapes, whispers tales of ancient times through its majestic Rockies. These towering peaks, sculpted over millions of years, hold the secrets of Earth's dramatic past. How did these giants rise? What stories are hidden in their rugged contours? The story begins some 300 million years ago. Much of the rock that was to be worked and sculpted into the peaks we see today was already created. In particular, most peaks today that are topped with granite probably formed more than a billion years ago. However, mountain building began 300 million years ago, around the same time as the Carboniferous Rainforest Collapse. At the same time that species were dying off, and forests were being depopulated. Over 200 million years before the dinosaurs went extinct, Africa and North America ground into each other, forming the enormous supercontinent Pangaea. The pressure from the United States' east coast and the Moroccan coast of Africa pushing against each other was felt in Colorado. This pushed up mountains, creating two truly ancient ranges, that of Frontrangia and Uncompagria, these were two massive ranges running in parallel from north to south. Many of the modern mountain ranges in Colorado did not even exist yet. In fact, many of the rocks that make up the Elk Range, for example, were yet to be formed. At this time, water eroded on the western half of Front Rangia into sediments that deposited in between the two great ranges into alluvial fans. Alluvial fans are great beds of sediment eroded by wind, rain, and ice, and carried away by melting water and mountain streams. This maroon-colored rock has since been pushed up and now looks down onto us from high above on the tops of the Maroon Bells, Pyramid Peak, and Castle Peak. Fossils from this time period were encased in this sediment and can be found on their slopes. For example, while I was descending Maroon Peak, I spotted a curious-looking rock below my feet. This was a fairly steep location, and so I nearly kicked the rock off the mountain. I picked it up and realized that this rock was full of little plant fossils. These fossils are so old that they were, in fact, older to the dinosaurs than the dinosaurs are to us today. The Rockies, currently characterized by towering peaks and rugged terrain, was once submerged beneath ancient seas, forming an extensive archipelago. The evidence of this submerged past is still visible today in the Rockies' unique geological formations and the diverse fossil records they contain. Between 72 to 40 million years ago, a significant geological event reshaped the region we now know as California. As the Pacific Plate collided with the American West Coast, it scraped off portions of the oceanic crust. These scraped sections contributed substantially to the formation of California's coastal and central regions. This pushed up mountains in Colorado and created many of the modern ranges that we would recognize today. For 30 million years, and up to 6 million years ago, volcanoes erupted in the southern part of the state and created the San Juan Ranges. Sunshine and Red Cloud Peaks, for example, are composed of rocks that were once inside the enormous Lake City Caldera. That entire area, including the aforementioned caldera, is further part of the enormous Uncompagra caldera. Uncompagra Peak and Wetterhorn Peak are made of material from lava flows from this period. The mountains 30 million years ago, however, were still not as high as they are today. The tallest mountain, whatever it was, probably wasn't taller than 9,000 feet or so. Starting 27 million years ago, the mountain valleys and plains of Colorado were, all together, thrust upward by a regional uplift of the entire landscape. The plains that had before been underwater 
and had once made the Rockies into an archipelago, were now thrust up 5,000 feet skywards. Mountain peaks of 9,000 feet finally found themselves in the cold, thin air of where they rest today, at 14,000 feet. Colorado geology, as you might guess, is incredibly diverse. The same is true for its 14ers. Rocks, like those found on Pikes Peak, for example, are somewhere around 70 times older than those found on Uncompahgre Peak. Pikes Peak Rock is around a billion years old. Mountains like Grays, Elbert, and Blanca date back to the early Proterozoic, at least 1.6 billion years old, and probably older. Keep in mind that the Earth itself is only 4.5 billion years old. Even for the hiker, these mountains present great diversity. Mountains like Snowmass and Maroon Peak are pretty close to each other, but the rock, even from a climbing perspective, couldn't be more different. The granite on Snowmass and Capitol Peak is sturdy and reliable, whereas the mudstone on the Maroon Bells is dangerously flaky. The crest stones have rock that is more solid still. This rock was formed by sediments, but contains many pebbles, small and large, embedded within the rock. This makes the rock great for climbing, almost as if the mountain had us in mind when it formed its rock, with all kinds of solid handholds. During the survey of San Luis Peak by the U.S. Geological Survey, the summit's gravelly terrain posed a challenge, as none of the visible rocks were particularly large. The largest rock they could find for fastening the survey marker was this one, merely a foot across. These mountains, rising from ancient earth, narrate a saga of transformation and resilience. Standing as sentinels of history, they remind us of the dynamic forces that have shaped our world.